All right, how's it going, everybody? Welcome. Uh, so today we're going to be doing a, you know, it's going to be a full work day. I'll tell you that. Uh, but before before we get started, we all got our coffees ready. Let's uh, let's let's do this right. Oh yeah. Now we're ready to go. Okay, so what we're going to start off with, or off with, I just want to let everybody know in the stream, we're going to have people coming and going all day. We're going to be streaming for hours here today. It's going to be exciting. I'm actually really pumped, really excited. Uh, we're going to be working on a new print. That's why the webcam looks a little odd. I'll explain it. Uh, if you're in the stream, and I'll be bringing this up multiple times, so I apologize to the YouTube video or, uh, watchers, uh, that this video is going to get broken up. We're going to. We're not. I'm not doing the entire Venom thing today. I want you guys know how we work, right? We got to work in stages and stuff. So, uh, what we're going to be doing today, and you'll see it on the screen. I'm going to show you guys sort of a step by step, real time process of it. Of um, anybody that does like maybe, <clears throat> or if you're interested in doing like digital roughs, and then you want to do like your pencils and stuff, uh, this will work. Well, it could work for you. This is what I do with it. Uh, but what I'm doing is, as you can see on the screen. I want to try something new here. Uh, I, what I want to do is, I've been. I want to make more prints for sure, but I don't want to make like a crazy amount of prints. I don't want to become a print guy, but like a print every maybe month or two. Two sounds about good. I think it'll be fun. Except I don't want to just do what I've been normally doing. Uh, I've been heavily inspired by you guys know. Uh, I talk about him all the time. Uh, Rob over at Sketchcraft. He does some amazing things. I think he has a, a lot of really good ideas. And uh, I think, you know, it's just like art. You pick and choose what you like from people, and you see if you can manipulate it into what works for you. So we're going to try sort of, sort of what he does. Um, but essentially what I want to get into is making a print, like you can see, right? Uh, but a small limited run of, I don't know, let's say like 10 to 20 prints, uh, and then possibly never print them again. Possibly. Uh, I, I want to tinker with that idea just to see how it goes but added on to that is this step right here which is to do all of the line art um, and I suppose even inking uh, that I'm not 100% sure on we're gonna see how that goes I don't know how I feel about that uh, this is gonna be an entire experiment and who's better than Venom because he's pretty much all black <laughs> and uh, so anyway the, the idea is is if we do a limited print run uh, I can also sell one obviously of the original and then with the original comes a digital print with it. So to, the idea here, and this is why I'm sharing it with you guys and you girls out there too, uh, and, and I'm grateful for Rob for uh, who knows how long he's been doing this. But th again, uh, if you guys are trying to make money off your art, I think this is potentially, a, or could be, potentially a really good idea and way to uh, sell more than you normally would. You know, uh, Selling prints is great, and I, I stand by it 100%. But I think if you can, in this case, I'm going to try it, sell an original with one of them. Uh, the amount of, if you just sold that, it almost covers, like, you don't even need to sell the rest of the prints. You know what I'm saying? Um, and all that stuff. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. On the screen, I just wanted to show you what's going on. So, if you guys are used to the silhouettes and stuff, <clears throat> this first uh, picture on the left, this is our, if you want to call it, color guide. Just an idea to sort of get my brain flowing, like... Where do I want to go with this? Okay, uh, and then the next one here is Venom. Uh, he's hanging up. I do this all the time with Spider-Man and stuff. They're always hanging upside down, like on the side of a roof or something. It just it it always looks odd, um, and I enjoy it because it's it's not you know it's not a flat-on shot, and it's a little confusing to the eye. Your eye always goes to like other things besides what they would normally do. If if this was like uh, like on the right here, you can see Venom's face. The reason I rotated it here is because that is something that people always will focus on is the face. But I always find when you flip them upside down, uh, your eye goes other places, which is interesting. So anyway, so we had the silhouettes with a, a rough color guide. Uh, I'm not tied or married to it, but we'll see how it goes. It's good to have that idea kind of there. Uh, then we got our, this would be called, you know, I would consider this my, you could even ink over this, to be honest with you. Uh, this would be my breakdowns. Uh, and then again, just a zoom in picture over here. So we have it open in Photoshop right now. Um, and this is why I wanted to show you guys that maybe do comic books, you know, this, this could like help you out. I've done a few videos on this kind of thing, but it doesn't hurt. People watch things at different times. So this is 11 by 17. Um, let me just see image size, just so you guys can see here, right over here. Uh, it is 300 dpi. Uh, what is this? Inches? Yeah, see, it's only four by six. So this is what we'll do, okay? Just so you guys can see how this goes, because the quality of this doesn't matter. So we can always blow it up. 
uh, inches. So we're going to go 11 by 17, 300 DPI. That really doesn't matter, but that's all good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is control R, get these rulers that show up. We're going to drag it down, and it'll usually auto like snap, like right there. So what what I, what this does, okay? This separates the image into two 11 by 17 pieces of paper, which is great because what I'm printing from is an 11 by 17 printer. Uh, I think it's um it's not inkjet or anything. It's toner. I highly recommend you guys look into a toner printer. Uh, if you guys are like me and you absolutely hate the prices and the bullshit that comes with ink printing, forget all that crap, man. Uh, un unless you want to print in like blue or something, then I get it. But for like even what I'm going to do, remember, I'm trying to do this as street and as dirty as possible. So we'll see how it goes. Let's see if I can close this here. I don't want any of those prison lights coming in. <laughs> uh, it Roleplay, welcome, man. Uh, what's that? You've been typing in chat and just realized that it's... Mm -hmm. I like... <laughs> awesome. Thanks, brother. Well, welcome. Anyway, so here we go. So we got that. So the idea here is we're going to cut up this image into halves and then print it in halves and put it together with what you see over here. And don't worry, we're going to go full screen with this so you guys can see um, how all this is going here. So I'm just going to paste it in and you can see like look how like that's actually really small, right? And it's okay because this isn't final artwork. This is this is just getting us to here. So it doesn't even matter really what it looks like, okay? All right, so we have it and now it just gets a little easier. So we're going to grab our little marquee tool and because we made that ruler that blue line you can see, it'll snap to that, right? I'm just going to hit shift control C. Uh, what what the shift control C does instead of just copying, uh, it basically copies everything you see, which is extremely helpful. Because uh, sometimes if you go control copy in these things, <clears throat> what will happen is it will just copy the layer as opposed to everything you see. I know that might sound a little whatever. but So uh, what I'm showing you too as well, I guess, is like imagine, because I just want to make this a little bit you know, applicable to everybody. Imagine you're doing a comic book. You, you see how you can do your comic roughs? Like We all know the power of digital with this stuff, which is huge. You can make your comic book roughs. A lot of artists actually do this, like a lot. Uh, and then they'll just sort of do the next step I'm doing, or they'll turn all their line art to blue and print it out, and then just do your pencils and inks over top of that, and you're golden. Um, so it's very powerful if, you can, if you're using Manga Studio or whatever the hell, or Clip Studio. All right, so we've got two layers here, and I'm just going to print off each one here. So file print, maybe. Look at that lag. Oh, yeah. This little off screen here. Uh, I'll bring it on so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Uh, this will be different for everybody, but make sure it's on l uh, landscape. Uh, I like to click, see if you click scale to fit, sometimes it'll shrink it more than it is. But since this is a pinup, I want to make sure Venom fits in there. So we're going to go ahead and make sure it does that okay. <clears throat> so print that. You'll hear it firing off. Uh, control P, we're going to do it again. So let me get this over here. Scale to fit, print. And you're gonna see there's gonna be like a little bit of a bobo area, I like to call it. You'll you'll see. Uh, Infinite saying if you have your image broken down into several layers, it will copy everything within the marching ants, regardless. Yeah, yes. That's what the I, I don't I think it's just copy all is what it uh, could be called. Alright, so Pretty much good to go. Okay, so I, I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, I'll show you in a second here, okay? So you can kind of see it in the... Th actually, here, let's just... Uh, you know, we don't even need Photoshop anymore, do we? Let's close this crap. Let's go to webcam only so we can see this. Uh, and I'll close all that over there. All right, so what you don't want to do is what I just did. I mean, I can still obviously work with this, but I printed in black and white. This is using a lot of toner in these things, especially if you're doing silhouettes like I do. Oops, didn't know I hit that. Let's turn that off. Um, uh, yeah. What you might want to do is lower the opacity, like 50, 60, 70%. We're using a light box today. This is the, the Huion one I did a review on. Highly recommend it if you're interested in this kind of stuff. Uh, I think this is a tremendous tool. The price is perfectly, like, budget, you know. It, it's not um, expensive to the point where it's unattainable, especially if you're doing something like this. But anyway, since we're using a light box, it doesn't have to be pure black and white like this. So, you know. I got camera shy and I just decided to print it. All right, so uh, this is what we do. Let's get all this crap out of the way. 
first things first is uh, I mean you don't need to but you know let's let's try to this let's pretend like we know what we're doing here so I just grab a ruler you can freehand this if you want or if you got like one of those table oh man that's gonna be a problem <laughs> if you got one of those like cutters you know like you had at school like shunk you know the ones I'm talking about that make that sound this could be done super quick uh, but again I just want to show you guys how I do this to try to keep this as like street level as possible you don't, we don't need fancy tools okay so I'll have that I'll get rid of that uh, what we're doing is I'm just going to cut this okay obviously and then I'm going to put this over top and then we're just taping now what you might find is if you get really tight line work what'll happen is in the corner like some of this it'll just it, it seems like it, it'll cut it off when it's printing and that's okay you sort of have to just kind of you know do a little bit of guesswork with it Let's get our, our friend Snippy. Arts and crafts today, you guys. Arts and crafts. And if you're just doing roughs, like I say here, you know, you don't have to be as precise. Because it's just rough, right? This isn't finished, beautiful artwork. Not yet, it's not. <laughs> Alright, so, you can see I'm just going to lay it on top and bang so by cutting it it's no longer 11 by 17 it's a little off right and that's all right and I like to use uh, the uh, this masking tape right yeah masking tape just because it doesn't stick to the paper so much oops Is it moving here and we flip it so I used to do this all the time when I was working uh, traditionally. And what was funny, <laughs> or at least what I thought was funny, is I tried to do this only with, um, I didn't have a light box at the time, and this was before my dad made me one. Uh, but the light box at the time was just a window outside. So I had to make sure I was up when the sun was up if I wanted to transfer this. So if, you know, I slept in or something stupid, and I was unable to do the light box, I just did pages of this kind of stuff and printed it out so that the next day I could do this stuff before going to work or do this before going to whatever. Uh, and it's it sounds kind of stupid, uh, but literally if, if all you've got is a window with light, you can do this, okay? Um, and I was using Photoshop at the time, and this is when I didn't really know how to ink digitally. You know, I was still learning the tools and all that stuff. So this is a great thing in my opinion. Whoops, we're not done with the tape just yet. This is a great thing, in my opinion, to sort of like, um, you know, bridge both those gaps. Uh, Nick, welcome, man. You could probably skip the printing if you just put the paper on your Cintiq monitor. Uh, you could, yeah, but I'm going to be inking, and I, I don't want anything to bleed through. It's an expensive toy, you know what I mean? All right, so here we go, right? Can you guys see? Yeah, you guys can see that. And this is literally what we're going to be doing for a little while. Uh, I'm not sure if we're just going to pencil over this and then ink or what or like because I was considering just inking over this uh, Another benefit of this too right is like if you screw up <laughs> Hopefully, it's not too far along the process if it's early You could just scrap this and grab another piece of paper, piece of paper and start right there's no erasing necessary that you have to do So I'm gonna bring this down Just try to Because I'm just trying to think of if people put this in a frame where it might cut off There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect Alright, so we'll go there, grab a couple pieces of this guy. But no, like what you're saying, Nick, as well, like if you guys want to start talking about like some street level stuff, yeah, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Uh, if you're just doing penciling, 100%, you could do what Nick just uh, recommended. Just put it right on your monitor. Uh, if you're using like a Cintiq or something you might have spent a little bit of money on, yeah, your call. <laughs> Nobody's going to tell you how to, you bought it, right? You can do whatever you like. So all I'm doing right here, hopefully you guys can tell, is I'm just, oh, gross. I'm just taping this on here just so that, you know, if, or when I bump into the paper, uh, it doesn't throw the alignment off and we always have to like go back and forth. All right. So what's really cool with this Huion is I can just sort of, you know what, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm going to keep bumping this with my arm as I draw. Give me a second here. Let's uh, power it down. I'm going to flip it around. left-handed people who needs them right <laughs> yeah, 
let's put that over there. A little flippy poo. I hope that can stretch. Oh, that's super tight. pulled on stuff okay cool so now it's way over here I can't bump into it all right now what are we what are we gonna do here we're we gonna just pencil this and then, then ink or what hmm <laughs> just lower it up a bit oops you know what I think I think we'll do the pencil stuff let's do the pencil that way I don't have you don't have to like Okay, so, just so I can kind of talk what the hell's going through my head. The reason why I'm trying to decide if I just ink over top of this or whatnot, penciling is going to add more time. Understood. However, inking on this, I don't get the f flexibility to move this around, at least with the setup I have right now, right? Um, so, I'm, I'm kind of debating in my head, going back and forth between comfort and time. Uh, oh, these are too heavy. 4H, perfect. All right, so we're just gonna do this. So this is what I would actually do back in the day, is we're just gonna pencil this stuff. Um, and it's not, don't think of this, you, you can do what you want, but don't think of this as like tight pencils. It's almost like you're copying all this like gesture line work that you already made and doing it again. Nothing here is final, I'm just putting, you know, like the ideas down. It's final once we actually ink it. And you guys, <laughs> just apologize, just bear with me on this part. You'll see it. It'll be like magic. Uh, AJ, how's it going, buddy? Uh, I think there's probably more left-handed people using these things. Why don't they make this? I, you know, uh, I've asked that a whole bunch of times. <laughs> but welcome, my man. funny outside I can hear it sounds like um, streetcar racing or like NASCAR and uh, I live in Windsor right and Detroit is right across like we can see it it looks like you could like swim across there in like <laughs> 20 minutes you know it's right there and it's like they always have like NASCAR racing and crap <clears throat> and you it just the sound goes over the water and you can just hear it like, it sounds like it's d almost down my street, like, or a couple blocks over. It's crazy. All right, let's get the bend in this tongue a little bit. Get the flat part of it. Uh, the reason we chose... Uh, Dan Hansen, how you doing? Go Red <laughs> Hey, Nabu, how you doing? Welcome, everybody that's uh, popping in now. So the reason I chose Venom is uh, he's he's a perfect... Uh, there are two reasons, honestly. Uh, one, I saw Marvel's coming out with, like, you know, how they always come out with their... What's the new hotness this, the next couple months or whatever, and there's Venomverse. I don't know if you guys saw that coming out. I'm not really particularly interested in it, but I always liked Venom as a character. He just seems so over the top. So there's a fighting game, Marvel vs. Capcom. They're talking about Venom. So, to appease on the potential uh, marketability, it's there. Uh, but the art side, <laughs> I was trying to pick a character that kind of has like, you know, like, uh, Venom to me, he's got like, there's two different kinds. Or they're kind of the same, which is how you want to draw him. There's one where he's sort of like, he's just colored like every other superhero, you know. Uh, and then there's the other one where it's like, he always looks wet. You know, in that symbiote or whatever, it's always very, like, I don't know, it just has a feel to it that it's it's uh, it's alien, I suppose, you know, just, like, very wet all the time. And I'm not sure which version we're going to do just yet, but the the wet version, what I like about that is it gives, it's a, a very good test for this, right, because I want to see how long it takes to do the inking on it. Um, and, and also, what we're going to be doing, too, 
because like I'm going to sell the original with a print for whoever ends up buying it. Hopefully somebody buys it. Right? We'll see how it goes. Some people just might not like the character, right? So it just sits there. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if I have any near me. So we either use a f um, non-photo blue or I guess non-photo red, uh, whatever you like. Uh, and the reason for that is when we scan it, you can go into Photoshop. I'm not sure if you can do it Mango Studio. I think I'm going to give it a shot just, you know, because there's people that don't have Photoshop. But we're going to give it a shot. And uh, what you do is you just replace that color. Um, and then I'll probably have to tighten up a little bit of the inks or maybe add a little bit. And then we can get into the digital coloring and stuff, right? Which is great. Actually, we should probably put the rest of his neck over here. Um, and I wanted to give him this big, fat Joe Matarera neck. Just makes it seem extra cool. Uh, so we can experiment with it, right? And we can see how it goes and, and all that. Uh, but the, the shading part, I saw Rob doing that. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense, honestly. Because if you're selling the original, and I don't want to necessarily ink this whole thing, because that's going to take a very long time. And I don't want these things to be like, you know, things that take me a week or two weeks to finish. Like a week tops. So the shading we do can be used not only as like a, you know, a little bit of a lighting guide. I won't, I won't be married to it. Uh, but as well as all that, you can also, uh, it just makes the shading quicker without having to ink. You know, and you can still see the line art. And a lot of people like, I do anyway, I really enjoy just seeing pencils sometimes like with some ink with pencil you you'll see as we as we go along I feel like I keep saying you'll see and it's like <laughs> it's going to build this up the anticipation is just crazy I actually miss doing a little bit of this getting in with these like analog tools so here I'll just kind of show you guys here let's turn this off so you guys kind of see what's happening here okay so I'm just bring this up slimy version looks more cool yeah I agree so this is really what the pencils look like if you look Honestly, you know, like, you can see I'm doing a lot of line petting, it's called, where it's all these lines or whatever, uh, but we're going to be inking over this, right? So it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just, you're transmitting the information that was here before onto this, that's all. Like just, I like when he's like shredded. So just give him like a bajillion <laughs> shoulder muscles, and we still have to draw in his uh, symbol. We're probably not even gonna see much of it on his chest. Uh, infinite. A friend of mine prefers when I leave in the sketchy line art. He equates the line art version to speed painting. Yeah, no, hey, <laughs> can't argue with it. I I'm with you. You know, it hits a different thing. And th this is the thing, I'll be honest. And th that's why this idea uh, that Rob, again, from Sketchcraft, I'll, I'll probably be bringing him up a whole bunch of time. Uh, I think he, he's on to something uh, very smart, which is, you know, you, you make this original piece here uh, for people that are interested in owning real art. Or not real art, you know what I'm talking about. Right, like an original piece. Uh, but they also get the print with it. So... You get both, you know, you kind of get this here for those people that like, you know, they want to touch something real, uh, as well as you get like, hopefully the coloring comes out nice. <laughs> or maybe you don't even want the print, you just want this, you know what I mean? And like the options there and they can give the print away or, or whatever the hell. That's why I think it's, it's a really good idea. It, make, it makes a lot of sense. So long, in my opinion. I mean, if you can make a whole career doing this kind of stuff, okay, well that's different, but for most of us, you probably have to supplement this, at least for now, uh, with doing something else. So it's a, it's a nice little way to make some side cash, hopefully, you know. And to be fair, like I'm having a blast already doing this. I don't get to work with a real pencil that often. This reminds me of my old, uh, I guess, old comic book days. <laughs> Wit crack, welcome. Appreciate the follow, my man. Say hello to everybody in the chat. Let everybody know where you're from. You got a webcomic you're working on? Any kind of art you want to share? 
by all means, man, jam it in the chat. Uh, Nick, you can do the inverse too. Printing companies can print on board for you. Then do the acrylic oil painting. At the I can't paint. <laughs> But uh, I think what you're saying there, Nick, is is a very good idea, right? Like a lot of cats, man. Like it's, you're right. There's what you're talking about too. And by me saying like I can't paint, so I'm just doing what I'm doing, whatever. But <clears throat> it's there's options, and that's that's it's really good to have. And being able to take I guess what you're really good at, and seeing if there's a way you can market it, make a little extra cash for yourself. There's nothing wrong with that, right? So yeah, it's a great idea. funny because I always like the way this looks right but really the print will look like this <laughs> and as soon as you see it like this it's like you can't I don't know it's like my brain can't comprehend the the details <clears throat> I don't know I guess you could do whatever you want with it you could keep it any way you want all right let's get the rest of the hands in here uh, this is also a test as well for uh, Jessup King pages. There's been a few of you, and, and thank you for the few of you that have, have asked, that are actually interested in some original Jessup King like comic pages, even though it's digital. Uh, uh, not just that though, like I've told you guys, like working on computers all the time can, I don't know, for me it's just starting to get to me. So I can do this, right, the digital page layout. Um, Print it out like this, get these all ready, go outside in the sun for a little bit until it gets too hot, <laughs> and uh, keep production going on, on webcomic stuff, you know, and I, I think that I'm, I'm interested in trying it, or I'm interested in trying it, period. Even if, like, you know, just to get away from a computer screen. So this is, uh, this is a great test for a lot of things, and I don't want to tr test too many things all the time because... I don't know. I, I kind of. I don't know about you guys. You guys get like this at all? You start testing all kinds of different ways to do stuff, and it starts affecting your like output. You get. You kind of get stuck in that uh, a potential rut, I guess. Of do I want that over or under? Let's go under. Of like process itis. You know, you're always trying new process stuff. And you're not actually making anything. It's gnarly. All right, all Tiger kind of claws. Ah, uh, Whitcrack is saying, uh, new here, but watch Sean's vids 
uh, on YouTube for a while now. Looking for insights to start a comic, and it's been an awesome experience. Really very much. Thanks. Hey, hey. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Thanks for uh, all your support. So, how's your comic going? Then, are you, are you just sort of starting it? Or are you still kind of in the the, the baby, <laughs> the baby phases? Or have you started production yet? Sort of moving on it. <sighs> Alright, well, let's gesture in this wall. We're going to fix all this wall stuff. I don't know. Might be alright. Take a second pass at some of the pencils here. some of the symbiote kind of coming off of his hands as well. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. How's it? Yeah, that's friggin' more than enough. All right. It's actually, uh, before I get rid of this, just keep our perspective and our form here. Because I might get lost when we start putting veins and crap in there. Cool. All right. Let's turn this off. We're going to finish up some pencils here. Just give me one second to get this out of here. All right. Actually, now I might be able to open this up. Be a light in this bitch. Cool. All right. Uh, Nabu currently doing concept art of villains. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, we we'll crack less than baby, uh, but haven't started production yet. Just have drawing some character. Okay. Cool. Right on. Right on. At least everybody's working on stuff today. I like it. Okay, so we've got a lot of crap going on here. So like I said, uh, I'm going to be drawing it this way, but the print is going to go this way. Uh, and I mean, you can tell, like, this is where your eye goes. So we're going to we're gonna see, see how we, can, how we can do this. Again, I mean, anybody that wanted it, let's just say, they could <laughs> put it any way they wanted. Uh, let me just grab a browser here, and I'm going to type Venom. Just for his out or his uh, his outfit. Even though I know a lot of it's being covered up by like his upper body. Yes, let's look at the Mark Bagley goodness. Okay. So I've got like these big eyes here. Uh, I might. I don't know if we break this up a bit. Kind of like them being animated like this. Look, kind of looks like he's having a good time. Uh, and I like the spikes on here. I, I think I'm putting the spikes in here at the bottom. He doesn't really have them. They're kind of like teeth, right? But they're just like random teeth sticking out that aren't even part of his mouth. I think it's just from the Jessup King stuff, like the Doblins. I think we're going to keep it, though. Kind of dig it. And we've got this long tongue that makes no sense. Now, I was wondering if we put the slimy stuff on there. You know, like everybody always puts like spit and stuff on the tongue. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I'll probably put some texture on here, like some taste buds. 
so we can taste those brains. All right, uh, let's check out the costume. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll keep going with pencil. So it's like a circle here. And I'll have to, uh, when I go to ink, we'll change up these lines to like kind of f go over the form of his like chest here because it's pretty shredded. We got one, two, three. Right, where's his shoulder? It's always a good question to be asking when you're doing anatomy, right? Where's his shoulder? <laughs> Alright, that's a tricep there, so we don't even get to see. Cool. Okay. Yeah. It's the most complicated costume in the world. I love it. It's Venom Hulk. Everybody I draw is like the Hulk. It's hilarious. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. All right, let's break out the tools. Break out the big guns. Which side is this? Nope, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, and this is the blue we'll be using. One of these, probably that blue. We'll see. Okay, so we're gonna do a little, a little testy poo. I'm pretty sure we're either going with this one or this one. Not sure. Uh, let's get this tape off here. That's just gonna get in the way. This is why masking tape's so good because it doesn't peel. Like I used to use. Oh, fuck like scotch tape stuff you'd wrap presents in and it would just rip like the bristle oh, it's so annoying and all I had to do was just spend a dollar you know get <laughs> get the appropriate tape alright and this stuff's fun to keep a little folder somewhere and you can always take it out and draw something else. Cool. Okay, so he's done. Fold it in half. Yeah, we'll just, I don't know where the hell we're going to throw this. I'll put it over here. Okay. I need that before we do <laughs> Alright, let's test the inking lines we're going to use. We got this one. This is 0 0.1. I think that's, is this one bigger? Oh, this one's even smaller, really? Hmm. I think this is similar to like the three pixel that we use in when we're doing our digital stuff, but it might be. I think if I just go light with this one, we can. It'd be alright. be too light. All right, I guess we're going. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's keep this close by. I might need this to do some ex some like experiments on. Let's put it. Well, I'm running out of room. <laughs> Shoving papers everywhere. All right, let's get to it. So I think I'm gonna be a little sissy here. I'm gonna I'm gonna just wait for the face. We're gonna do that one a little bit later. Do that a little bit later. Actually. Let's do some uh, good old social posts. Let's do selfies. One second. <laughs> hey guys, come check out my Twitch stream. Currently working on Venom. Was that lame enough? Hey guys, come check out my Twitch stream. 
currently working on Venom. Gross. Guys, come check out my Twitch stream. Currently working. Hooked on a feeling do. Social post of the day done. Let's get back to what matters. Um, hmm. What are we gonna warm up on? Look at this is looking. Let's see where this goes. Is this uh, okay for you guys? Should it be zoomed in more? Are you guys all right? You guys let me know. Uh, so some of the stuff I'm trying to do here is like put some layers in there, you know, like right here, so that when I do the highlights and stuff, it's little places for detail to hide. It's a pretty fun little trick. Get some veins in here. You guys want me to zoom in? Alright. My computer's what what is this? Did I hit that? Let's see. Well, it's recording. I'm not sure if I'm still live or not. Should be live? <laughs> My computer was like flashing, it was like uh, OBS, what I stream with, was flashing like red and yellow, clearly trying to get my attention. All right, let's uh, zoom in here, just give me a second, some properties, um, configure video, okay, move this over here, is that better? Sorry for the shakiness too, there's not much I can do about that. Should be good now, I think I hit something. My uh, LAN cable doesn't have like, um, there's a plastic thing you put in your computer and there's like a tab and that keeps it in. Well, mine's broken off so sometimes it'll just slide out. So if I can put it in quick enough if I notice, <laughs> the stream will still keep going. Hey, Jessup, what's up buddy? Sometimes when you're penciling like this too, like there's a lot of like details in here that it's hard, at least for me anyway, for my brain to see which ones I'm, I've kept. So once we get the inks in here, we can erase all this stuff. Then we go back in and do another pass.
Yeah, I'm looking at, can you guys hear me at all? I'm looking at the video preview and it's just frozen. Jessup, come on, you gotta go down, bud. Come on. It's fine, if you guys here, let me uh, refresh this. Maybe it's my side. Technology. start making up some muscles here <laughs> just to make them look more shredded <laughs> Absoloso. Am I saying that? Absoloso. That's how you say it, right? Welcome. Appreciate it. Let everybody know what you're working on, where you're coming from. Appreciate the follow. You know, we still got that Zangief still uh, that we started that one night, and I haven't finished that. I want to, even then, I was like, uh, I want to start doing like a like a print series of stuff, you know. 
Uh, and, and Street Fighter is great. <laughs> you know, I love Street Fighter. Who doesn't like Street Fighter? Uh, whether you like Street Fighter Five or not, that's not the that's not the point. But uh, I'm just wondering if doing like these 11 by 17s are the way to do it of like each character, or if it's more like just for those kinds of things, do like like a collage of characters, you know? Um, but Spider-Man, as much as I love the Hulk, what I always loved about Spider-Man, and I think a lot of people like this about Spider-Man, is his villains. Like, they're all, they, they just feel kind of, I don't know, Marvel villains to me are always, there's something special about them because they're so, like, I guess, like, pure in a way, comically pure, if that makes sense, meaning, like, they're all, like, kind of not over the top, but it's just, like, an animal person or the evil guy, or, you know, or, like, they have that individual power that's just, I don't know, I just, maybe I'm just being a fanboy of it, but I was thinking, of like, I really love, like, Maximum Carnage. I was actually reading that the other day again. And all the characters in there were just super cool, man. Even Doppelganger was sick. So who got at Jonathan Rector without the one on Instagram? Uh... Oh, is there two Jonathan Rectors on Instagram? I didn't know I had a one on mine. Oh, you're looking for the wrong... That's right, yeah, because it's Scribbles with Jonathan on Instagram, not my name. Yeah. I can understand how that happens. No, I just noticed a thing at the bottom of this. Oh, okay. <laughs> just a little confused what you're saying there without the one on Instagram. Anyway. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. That, okay. Yeah. Now I got you. Now we're reading the same book. Honest mistake. Honest mistake. All right. I think I'm brave enough. Let's do it. Shaky hands. Oh, it's just joking. All right. allergies in the morning just make it sound so gross sorry about that
got to have spikes on the tongue, right? Venom, are you taking ref or are you doing it? Uh, just whatever feels good. Uh, the reference I had that I opened was the original Mark Bagley one, just for the, the chest symbol. Uh, I'm not sure who I've seen add the spikes and stuff to the tongue and to like his jaw, you know. Uh, but for whatever reason, it's in my head and just adds to the, the I don't know, makes him f seem more uh, vicious, I guess. No real word I can explain it, but I know th uh, most likely this style of venom is probably not. You know, like there's things like uh, there's people that like. There's nothing wrong with this either, like agent venom and stuff. Like I don't really care for that. I suppose just like on a design thing, like it's cool. But I always like the original, like Maximum Carnage '90s venom. Even though this one looks nothing like that one. Maybe the eyes, not really. JDCN four eighty eight. Thank you. I appreciate the support. Where are you coming from, my man? Here on Twitch, YouTube. Say hello to everybody. Grab a coffee. Grab an art desk. There's there's a few art desks still open, so you made it made it in the right time, man. Hop in. There's a Cintiq there all set up for you. If you like, there's some pencils. Let's get to work. Pavinimo, thank you. Welcome. Let everybody know in the chat who you are, where you're coming from. Uh, yeah, if you guys are working on anything too, I always encourage you guys to, to share. Post links to, you know, let, let's keep this uh, work safe content. But you guys are making comics and stuff, by all means, share them. There's always people that are going to be checking that stuff out. Welcome. Grab a coffee. French press is just pressed. Coffee's still warm. You don't like coffee? That's fine. Get some tea. We got some beverages over there, over in the lunchroom. Grabbing our desk. They're filling up fast. Got a Cintiq with your name on it. Get some Photoshop. Some Clip Studio on there. You're good, man. Start making some comics. Let's do it.
hands are getting dirty. We're getting smudgy. Put this over top here. Buddy, what's up? Are you going for your nap? Hey, what's up? You going for your nap, Papa? You go for your sleep? Go for your nap, Papa. You want to help me finish the line art on this, bud? Hey, you want to help me? You want to help me? <laughs> All right. Yeah, you big goofball.
So, now the tricky part. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see how we're going to do this. This part is going to be a little tricky. It's his, uh, his symbiote there, like, attaching to the stuff. Now, I'm going to grab a ruler and start doing some of this stuff, but there's lines that are overlapping here that are probably going to be a little bit of a problem. Might have to use, like, whiteout or something. I don't know. I know digital, I can just go in there and clean it. Bing a bang a bongo, not a problem. There, let's 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 put it back. Let's do it this way. Hmm. Alright, well maybe what we'll do is we'll just whew. Is there a like make layer button? In case I screw this up. Maybe we'll just do a couple we'll just do a couple lines. Doesn't that to be beautiful? It's gotta work. A couple guides, you know. Actually. Uh, we'll go this way. Hey Astro Beam, how's it going? Uh, did you ever feel yourself instinctively trying to control Z in real life? <laughs> uh, no. See, the thing is, that maybe that's the benefit of being left-handed. So when you guys are all drawn right-handed and your keyboard's on your left, control Z is very easy to do. When you're like left-handed, it's like thumb Z, like it's such a weird thing. So no, like I've never had, to, I've never been drawing, been like, I've never done that. I could imagine if I was like this just because it's the same, but when you're drawing, at least on a Cintiq or whatever, my hand's always like, if I ever have to do anything on the keyboard, I have to reach and do something. It just seems, you know, it is what it is. I wonder why it keeps dropping frames. Maybe he's streaming just the webcam. Just killing it. <clears throat> Your left hand, you always do control S. <laughs> See, so there you go. It's not, it's not a hundred percent what I'm doing. It's different for everybody. I like that.
let's draw this thing in first before I start worrying about the rest of this tentacle stuff. And sorry for all the drop frames, you guys. I don't know what the hell is going on.
think this is good for now. Let me just air this out before we start a race and stuff. Feel the breeze. Anybody boy. Actually, give me one second, guys. I'll be right back. I'm just going to fill my coffee cup. Alright. Hey Scapula, welcome man. You know what? I went to bed at like twelve, twelve thirty last night. I woke up at six thirty in the morning. Feeling pretty damn good. And I looked at the time and I'm like, <laughs> that can't be real. And I got up and I looked at another clock and I was like, What? What kind of monster am I becoming? So I thought I would use this extra time to kind of put a dent in a new print. Thank you, Nimrod. Welcome, buddy. This part sucks. All right, so let's talk process for a second, what we're going to be doing after this here, okay? So the next stage, I'm going to treat sort of like a gray wash. Actually, you know what? No. Okay. So, hmm. Hmm. Okay. So we're going to be experimenting a bit. Not today. Well, today is an experiment for, for reasons I said before. 
Uh, but going in, going forward, what, what I might do, so I'm not just being totally like friggin' in the air with you guys, is <laughs> is scan it like around this stage, and then I can finish it off digitally. But then do like ink wash or gray wash over top of this to sell for the original, because I always like the way that looks. But what we're doing today uh, is referenced from anyway who who I think I'm referencing off of uh, Rob over at Sketchcraft I think he had a tremendous idea with this stuff so I'm gonna try it out um, so we're gonna grab a blue photo non photo blue pencil uh, he does red you can use red whatever color you like and the blue is it's quite of like kinda like a, sh a shadow guide but not really the intent of it is when I scan this in I can remove the blue or the red right uh, and then we can go ahead and just color this uh, like normal. So the intent here is to sell a limited amount of prints uh, and one of them comes with like the original uh, for those interested. So the next step we're going to be doing here is the lighting guide I guess. Grabbing blue and very lightly coloring it in. You know we're not making this, I'm not coloring this. I'm just using that as a color for shade. Uh, and then we'll ink over top of that and the reason for that if uh, working with gray wash has taught me anything is that when you start to add gray wash and shadow and anything over ink it gets odd <clears throat> I find it's best to do all your effects and crap if you're gonna color all that kinda of stuff first and then ink over top you can kinda of hide mistakes that way too like little errors that you might have had <clears throat> Let's see if I don't jinx it. Just be careful on the corners, guys. You can get like in one of those erasing frenzies. <laughs> and the eraser comes back on like a lip of the paper and just right just bends the hell out of it. I didn't even realize the camera just going to town. Sorry about that. We're almost done with the shaky crap. So it doesn't got to be perfect. <clears throat> Let's put this away. Hey, Jessup, you can have a nap with me in here, bud. Hey Lars, how you doing buddy? Haven't seen you in a while. Hope all is well. How's uh, how's the puppy? I wish I could let you guys in on this music right now. It is fucking straight fire. Okay, uh, what the hell am I doing? Right, I just want to add a couple more details before we move on. Just more like symbiote stuff coming off. You guys know how I do this all the time with everything. Puppies look good? Right on. Can't stay long? Just pop and say, okay, cool, man. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, my man. 
enjoy your day. Okay, so I think we're pretty much fine to keep going. I know there's some more detail and stuff we might be. You know, we'll do the line art out. You know, let's, let's just relax. Let's just relax. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just getting so excited. All right, let's grab our blue here. Now let's take a look at what this looks like because this might be too low. Too low? I mean too light. <laughs> Dorin Doll 82 welcome. Appreciate the follow. Uh, where are you coming from? You coming from YouTube, Twitch? I always feel like this blue is just too dark. See, this is the thing, I have red, and I just feel like I'm ripping off Rob too much if I use red. Oh, we'll go with that blue, we'll try it, right? It's all experimenting. Let's just clean up our workspace a little bit here. All right, so let me just show you this as well. <laughs> hey, just rip them off. All right. Oh, did I close? No, I didn't close it today. Where is it? Maybe I did. Wow. Okay, so just give me a second. I'm going to show you guys where we started for a lot of people that are just popping in right now. Because we've been doing it for like almost two hours, right? So let's refresh our memories. Got mysterious eyes. Oh, come on. It's taking forever. <laughs> Seriously? funny I just want to open up a PNG that's in my download file folder and sometimes just by the act of trying to open that folder it takes like a minute and it's faster to just open up Photoshop and open the file how crazy is that So this is where we're at right here, okay? So if you guys kind of see where I was trying to hit with this uh, lighting guide, is the light's coming from below us, because I know I keep saying this, but the idea of this print is it's upside down. Now, if people buy it, they can, you know, put it anywhere they want, of course, but this is the intent. So what I'm going to try to do here is what I'm shading it is to think of it that way, all right? And to make our life easier, we're going to do it opposite. So I just have to make sure this way, if I draw it, if I shade it this way, it's like a normal. We're shading it as if the light's coming from above us, right? It makes it so much easier so that when we rotate it, it'll do the effect we're looking for. Uh, Larry's saying, so I found out I could charge, I don't know what that is, charge the what on my Surface Pro stylus? I charge with the H2. Oh, you ch oh, okay, the, the, the nib. I like how it's auto-correcting the nip. <laughs> That's funny. All right, here, let's zoom in. You guys like that. Nip.
make sure we have enough shadow in here. I mean, we're going to be coloring this again. It might seem like double work, but uh, when we shade it again, I want a lot of shading in here because, like, to make him look wet and stuff, you know, uh, we can do like a bounce light. So we're coloring into this as well. It's funny, I'm gonna, I'll answer that question in a second. Uh, I was just thinking about that. I've been doing a lot of what Rob does uh, for some other stuff too, because I find it highly efficient. My workflow is pretty much just like Freddie Williams' workflow. I don't know, if, like, am I just a hack? Can I just not come up with my own workflows? Am I the problem? Am I just a copy, a copy-paste artist? Um, I was just asking, since you're using Rob's workflow, we use the shading color Copics. No, I don't, I'm not getting into that. That's too pricey for me right now. I mean, like, I'm only trying this because I'm interested in seeing if I'm doing limited edition prints. Like, let's say I just make 20 prints of this, um, and that's all I ever make, and we'll see what the hell that, that's like. And then one of them you can sell with the original if people are interested in it. That, again, that's the... I know you weren't here earlier when I was talking about it, but that's the intent with this is to see if there's an interest in people getting original art with a print. Um, so let's say there's 20, let's, <laughs> I'm just throwing um, whatever numbers out here, but let's say there's, I only make 20 that you can get. So first come, first serve, right? Once they're gone, they're gone. And trying to sort of like build that into my fan base that they know, like when I'm working on a print, that once it goes, you know, live, for ship like f to buy I'm all over the place right now because I'm trying to figure out the shading <laughs> but anyway uh, so let's just say I do 20 and um, again same thing but then offer this with one of them if if that works then theoretically I, I make more money doing this than just making prints and selling them um, so that's what I'm, I'm just kind of testing the water with that and being able to do Jessup King as well, like just the line art, I don't know about the inking, away from the computer, it would be kind of cool. So we'll see how all this goes. I don't have a lot of time to experiment with some stuff, but I want to make some time to experiment a bit, and this is a, a good chance to try to do that. Copying with Jonathan? Yeah, I <laughs> uh, Thank you, Nabu. It's funny because this is, it, once we get the inking and stuff on there, it's going to look totally different. And this just basic line art, right? Like, it just looks like lines. You guys can't see, like, down here. It's just lines and stuff, right? But just adding this alone is huge. And then when you go to the next stage after this and you start adding, like, the contour line and stuff, like, it just, it just becomes a whole different image. This is my favorite part usually in the whole process is adding the shadow.
Uh, Nick is saying you should ping Pete Morbacher, Botcher about that. He does a number of variations in limited edition. Oh, really? Yeah, I do think there's something there. Like, don't get me wrong. I, uh, I try to make stuff that I would buy. So if I offer a price for something, it's not just like I'm trying to like rip people off or anything. It's what do I think? Not just that you're worth, but like my what I assume my audience would spend, right? So that's why I'm experimenting with this because I've never, I don't really sell original art that often. And when I do, it's usually on eBay. There's a couple people that always buy it. So that's why I want to experiment with this. I think it's a really good idea. I just want to, it, really it comes down to being aware of how long this takes and then how much money I make off of it because, you know, we're all artists and you want to be, a, you know, I don't want to say a businessman, but whether or not you're working for yourself or you're working for somebody else, you got to be aware of what your time is worth. Um, and with this too, there's a lot of variables that come in, right? Like the character you pick. Some people might not like, I know people like Venom. It's like drawing Deadpool. You know that stuff's got a fan base, right? Um, but it's how many of the prints sell? Is it worth it to keep going to do this kind of stuff? Because some people are just, you know, they don't care about original art, and that's, that's fine. So you kind of have to throw out nets every now and then, I call them, to see what your current fan base so you guys, and not necessarily just you guys, but there, there are people that follow me just because of the art that I sell, you know, or projects I'm working on. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of throwing a net out there to see what fish I catch that are interested in this. And if there's enough of them, then you keep doing it. And I recommend you guys try doing it too, right? Like, if you're just making your own comic book or an art book or anything, like, you're still testing the waters to see if your fans are interested in that from you, you know? I wanted to start doing, I think it's like, a, who did I see this from? Oh, what's his name? Hey, let's copy some more from Lacine Thomas. LaShawn. Or Lacine, right? I always say Lacine. Wasn't it just LaShawn? Where it's like you put, it's like an Udon thing. If you ever guys ever watched or read that, like Street Fighter and stuff. You put like little triangles in the shading. I'm not going to do it just yet because <laughs> it feels almost permanent on here. But let me zoom out a little bit so you guys keep seeing stuff. So he does limited runs, one size online and one size for cons. Interesting. So does he do the smaller sizes for cons? Oh, really? Interesting. So on the last stream, I was kind of telling a little story. Well, I guess I'll repeat it in cliff notes for you guys. A little story time for you. It was uh, last year. I was leaving a convention. And I did okay. I didn't, you know, like, I'll never complain. People bought my some of my stuff, which is always great, right? Uh, and this was all those new turtle prints I made stuff. And I still stand by the, like, I enjoy the stuff I made, which is always good. You know, like when you like what you do, <laughs> sometimes, or a lot of times you kind of look at what you're doing and you're like, Ugh, you know, I wish I could have did better on that or next time I'll get better. But those turtles ones, they took a long time. The, the DC ones, the Mega Man ones, if you guys remember that. So I made all those and I was excited to go to the shows and, and you know, do all that stuff. Um, but I just had this realization because there's this other cat that was down the, the way for me. Uh, and I saw some other people that were doing this too. And I've seen it at other shows. So it's not like it would totally caught me off guard. But I guess I was just disillusioned. Uh, with just the fact that I feel like if you're going to go to a convention as an artist, you only gonna really have like two options. 
And, and if you guys disagree, I would love to have a little, I guess, not a debate, but I'd just like to hear your reasons for it. Um, you're either trying to sell something like an art book or a comic book, or you're selling prints. Because I feel like, hey, I draw spiders. How's it going, man? Because I feel like when I when I went anyway, this was just my experience. I went there, and one sec, I've got music just pumping in my ears because it's so it's so good. Um, but anyway, I had. <laughs> I draw spiders. Thank you. What is with all those faces? What's all the sad faces? How the hell did that pop up? That's the first time I've seen that. <laughs> Let me in on your secret. Um, yeah. So there's a guy across the way that had uh, a whole bunch of prints. If it didn't even matter his style necessarily, but he just had like any character you want, uh, and he sold so much. At least every time I saw there, people were giving him money, uh, which makes sense, right? So if at my booth I have a couple prints. And I have like a sketchbook I'm trying to sell or a comic book I'm trying to get people to go. It's kind of like I get people there to my booth and I'm like, here's a comic, uh, but you get a free print. It just feels kind of like I have a store as opposed to like you're coming to me for a thing, at least in my head. So the, the decision I had to come up with, or at least I chose to come up with was, okay, if I'm going to a convention again, it's got to be for one or two reasons. Either one, I'm selling prints and that's it. I'm not trying to push a book or anything. I'm just pushing prints uh, and if that's what I want to do then that means I have to start making some serious time to draw a lot of characters uh, you know because you want to make money and there's so many different things that people would be interested in buying creative stuff you know like mixing genres and, and all that crap uh, and it's gonna take time the other one is if I'm making a book or a comic excuse me <clears throat> and I want people to be interested in that well I have to make that thing <laughs> And that takes a lot of time. I don't have all the time in the world, so you kind of have to pick your battles, right? And that means at my booth, um, maybe not necessarily not have any prints, but like, just don't be like, just don't be, you know, butt hurt when you don't sell prints because you're trying to sell a book, you know. So I just made the decision myself to go. I don't want to be a print artist currently. If I was doing freelance or something, uh, perhaps. But that's not my life right now. I, I, you know, I have a job and things, so I don't, I don't need to do that. Um, it's nice to do every now and then, such as like what we're doing today. But so that's just me. That's the decision I made. So just to kind of go back to where I even started talking about that was um, with that, you know, kind of coming up with different kinds of prints and uh, quality and stuff like that. For me, it doesn't make sense to do that because it just separates my time from what I'm actually wanting to do. Uh, so this is a test. Jessup King is what I want to be doing and I have to be moving forward on that. That's what I've decided to do. So spending time that I don't have to make prints and stuff. It's it's kind of like if I wanted to be a print artist, in my opinion anyway, uh, it would make a lot more sense to just keep making a whole bunch of prints uh, and then I could make like websites, I could be shipping, so I could be just drawing like stuff like this all the time and this is super fun. Don't get me wrong, this is a blast. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. Um, but I don't want to be a print artist right now. Uh, right now I'm, I'm trying to really focus on just doing comic book stuff, right? Um, so that's why. Anyway, just to sort of Go back to that. Uh, Lars is asking, are you going to ink over this or are you only adding contour and line weights? Uh, contour and line weights, I won't be like making this blue ink at all. That's kind of like what the shading is. It's replacing my ink. Um, I'm not, because tr I'm going to be scanning this in, removing the blue, see how that looks, tightening up some of the inks because I know it's going to get a little sloppy possibly. Um, and then I'm going to be coloring it using this sort of like a, um, a shading guide. Uh, it's totally up in the air once I get to the digital thing. Uh, but yeah, that's what this will be done. Finally on Twitch, spiders, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Nick, uh, third thing, sorry, build a mailing list. Yeah, and there's that too, right? And that's the other thing and that I think goes heavily with uh, prints. It's a whole, it could be a whole gig. You guys, like, if you want... It's definitely something you could do is like a freelance career, or even if you're working a you know like a job somewhere, you can become like a print artist. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just I don't have because I'm because I'm moving forward with Jessup. I ha I don't have the resources uh, in order to do all of that myself. 
if I didn't have like a full time job working somewhere uh, and this was my thing, then 100% I'd be doing that. Hey, Keeman, welcome, my man. Uh, Nabu, is there still a lot of people buying print? Uh, you mean comics or like uh, print prints? Like prints you put on your wall. If you're talking about comics, yeah, I think there's lots of people that still buy print. More so trades, I find. At least my circle, that's what everybody always talks about that they buy. They don't like buying floppies and stuff. Um, but some of the research I was doing that I shared with you guys before is um, more and more people that I kept asking, they're all going to like digital to read their comics. Unless it's something like, here's the thing, let's say, we'll use Jessup King as an example. I know everybody's going to start getting tired of that friggin' name. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, but So with Jessup, it's free online, right? So everybody can check it out. Um, you can't get it anywhere else except online, right? Like I don't offer floppies every month. So because of that, there becomes an interest for a digital thing. You know, that's why Kickstarter exists because most people, in my opinion, you can go online, get the stuff for free, but sometimes indie stuff, it's, it's not big publisher stuff, right? The indie stuff is interesting. It's different. You can only get it like online usually, right? Unless the person does like a small print run at a show or something, or they offer it on their site, you know, like that kind of stuff or on a Kickstarter. So that's where I think there's, that's why I'm excited to keep trying with, with what I'm doing is it's it's all online and then we'll see and like I said uh, a lot of people I was asking they consume their stuff digitally probably because it's free right um, but I hear comiXology and stuff has been huge for people so we'll see what's gonna happen with that I don't I don't really know the first year is just making the comic book and then if I have to go maybe shop to publishers and stuff I don't know we'll see I have no intent on putting it for print but if the demands there we'll see I don't want to say no to something because I am not interested in doing it. Meaning like I have no intent or interest in printing that stuff because I just don't want to deal with the shipping and getting crates of boxes shipped to me from China or wherever the hell. And I just, I just know what kind of time I have right now and I'd rather be making stuff as opposed to trying to get all that going. I don't want to be a publishing house, <laughs> you know? Uh, so we'll see. Like everything changes. It's just have a plan for what you're currently doing and what you'd like to happen with what you're currently doing um, and then as opportunities pop up I say that's when you start you know course correcting but make sure like at least your initial vision of why you started doing your thing kind of like is you're moving on that all the time if that makes sense uh, I draw spider saying uh, but like fi uh, fan art prints right I see those getting up more uh, an example of OC. I don't know what OC, original characters. Um, let me just go back to what you're saying so I can get it in context. Oh no, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Yes, yes, yes. You could. That's the thing. It's prints, right? Like, let's be honest. I'm doing Venom now. If I did this with Jessup King, most people wouldn't give a shit because they don't know about my comic, except the people reading it, right? So that there is that. So a lot of the stuff, like, it's, it's the game. It's playing the game, picking a character you like, just kind of draw it and do that kind of stuff. Like, I get it all. It's um, it's everything that surrounds that gets a little muddy. That's all. Mailing list can help kickstart. Uh, exactly, yep. You're right, Nick. Uh, and that's the thing, right? Um, so just going back, what you're saying is 100% true. Just what I'm saying is uh, that's one of the things. I have, no in I have no intent to do print unless the demand is there. So mailing lists and stuff, like it's just so much time I just don't have. So here, let's, let's just, what the hell am I talking about with all this time you don't have, right? I'm not making time. That's how it goes. So I go to work, like most of you guys, fortunate, I got the full-time job. Um, so my day starts at 6.30 a.m. I'm done work, I get home around five, okay? So that leaves, you know, after dinner, let's say it takes an hour to get home and just, you know, make sure no house, there's no fires going on. So let's say six. So from 6 to like 10, maybe 11, 12, depends on what you're doing. That's all I get. Now, within that time, you've got life stuff you have to do. Um, I have to start, you know, exercising. So I have to make sure that I'm doing at least a half hour to an hour a day of, um, hopefully you guys can hear me. I don't know if this is cut off or whatever. But all that stuff is cutting into your day, right? Uh, so I'm down to like 
m- most nights it's like two to four hours tops. Maybe actually one to four hours throughout the week. On the weekend, it's the same kind of shit. This kind of stuff is huge. I just don't have the time to do that. Um, I'd rather be making stuff and posting it online to see if there's, I guess, job possibilities from doing this stuff. Uh, to replace, I suppose, the full-time job, as opposed to just burning myself at all ends, just trying to do everything. You, I can't. I can't do everything. I've tried doing that for a long time, and it was like the dumbest shit ever. I was miserable. All I, It always just felt like work. And I had to just, you know, that's why I tell you guys, just ask yourself why the hell you're doing your thing. Why are you doing what you're doing? If it's not a very good answer, you better, you know, <laughs> reconsider what you're doing. Uh, it's an honor to have you, Keeman. Nabu, I am curious about this. Does a company like DC, Marvel, and Image take in indie comics? Uh, I don't think so, no. They don't need to. They've got their own properties, right? Uh, Den... How's it going, my man? Are there no rules to what you can draw? I mean, surely Venom is copyright. Oh, it's 100% copyrighted for sure. It's like this print stuff is so... It's up in the air, man. I've I've seen some people get, you know, kind of burned by it, and then a lot of people, nobody really says anything about it. I mean, I'll keep doing this. Like, I don't do this that often, I don't think. But that doesn't mean it's not, you know, right or anything. Uh, but I'll stop once either I get burned, and I hope I don't get burned hard. But that would make me stop. Uh, or you start hearing other artists at, like, big shows. Get, like, I don't have a huge audience, you guys. That's the thing, right? So if you're like me and you don't have a huge audience, uh, you can, I don't want to say get away, but you can do stuff like this, and it doesn't matter because you're just a small fish, right? Um,. If I was to sue somebody for drawing a character of mine that I didn't want them to draw, I would much rather go after the biggest fish I could find because, you know, it's not even about making the money off of them. It's to scare all the little fish away, like me. That's all it's for. But if they go after the little fish, well then, you know, it it is what it is. But ultimately, like, don't get me wrong, I love this stuff. I love drawing this character and the characters like this, but I want to make a conscious effort to just be making just as much if not more content of my own stuff you know what I'm saying hey Justin how's it going buddy Let's, uh... Oh, no, I don't, don't worry. Trust me, if I get in trouble, I get in trouble. It's all good. And I guess uh, the other side of it is I think when you get sued for this kind of stuff, you get sued for the presumed uh, money you made off of whatever it is. And I don't know if that's true. It's just stuff I've heard. So if that is true... Doing limited print runs is probably even better for you. Because <laughs> you have evidence, you know, saying like, no, I only made like 10 or 15 of these. And I didn't even sell them all, but you guys are going to sue me for the presumed thing. So let's assume I sold them all. Let's say I only did 10, and they're 10 bucks each, right? That's what, 
a hundred bucks. Let's say we sold this original for fifty to sixty, so at most two hundred dollars. So if th if that's the cost, like no, who's gonna sue over that? I'm not saying that it's not possible. I'm just like, it's just a waste. Of, like your lawyer alone, the phone call is gonna cost that. What's the point? Unless you wanted to make a point, right? That's what I'm saying. That's that's why it's like, if they're gonna go after people, it's just to make a point. It's not about the money. Cost more money just to get the shit started. But stranger things have happened. Uh, I deleted you off Facebook. Oh, did I? <laughs> no, don't worry about it, man. I just kept a lot of the people that I actually like that I know know that I've met and stuff like that. Just because I'm I'm tired of getting notifications on Facebook. I've turned the shit off. I'm always getting tagged on stuff. It's just becoming like. Dude, I was getting stressed out, man. Like, I'm just getting social media overload. I'm, like, taking a break. I'll post stuff and rarely check comments for, like, the next month or so. It's just over the top. And if people want to follow what I'm doing and stuff, just follow my art page. There's no reason to follow my personal stuff. Most of the personal stuff I post on Facebook pisses people off anyway. It's all vegan stuff. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, there's no, like, you know, like, oh, I'm at a birthday party. Cool. Nobody cares. <laughs> My art stuff is totally available for stuff. And, and you won't miss out updates or anything like that. I think a lot of people, it's kind of like the, the, the same thing that was kind of brought up a little earlier about uh, Instagram. Where it's like you search my name, but it's not my name. It's the Scribbles of Jonathan stuff. You know? Um... Infinite is saying uh, you will get sued for damages and they can sue uh, you even if you make no money. Oh, okay, cool. See, so there you go. Uh, there are also loopholes with the copyright law, one of the largest uh, deciphering whether or not. Th I don't know what the hell you just said there. Um, Nabu, what's wrong with you? There's no, I'm vegan. I don't think there's anything wrong with vegan. Just a lot of people have opinions, and just like I guess I do, of, um, you know, people just don't want to see that in their feed. I can't argue that. That's why I just ended up doing what I did. I just deleted a bunch of people because my feed's filled with, you know, people I don't really know <laughs> and their life stuff, which is fine, which, you know, which is fine, but it has nothing to do with me. And it's just, it's just getting overwhelming. You know, it's like I'm, I'm having a snapshot of all these people's lives that, it's not that it doesn't matter. I don't want to make it sound like, you know, people or whatever. I'm just saying... You know, if I don't, if I can't actually talk to these people, or go visit, or something like, it doesn't matter that so and so graduated. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's just what I was doing. This is honestly what it was. I'll be totally candid with you guys. Is once I started doing my art page on Facebook, people kept adding me still on my personal page, so I was stuck. I'm like, well, I want people to just see that stuff over there. But if they want to, like, maybe when I go, hey, guys, check it out. There's a there's a new print you can buy. Well, I don't want to just segment those people that, for whatever reason, they picked the wrong place to uh, sell to, you know. And now I'm missing out on all these people. So I would just start accepting everybody and anybody. I was up to, I think it was like 15, 1,600 friends. Uh, over the last three days, I, I deleted like 1,000 people. Like how, think about that for a second. How crazy is that? And I'm not saying that I'm not gloating, nothing. I'm just saying that is a lot of stuff in a feed that like doesn't even matter, right? Like there's no reason it matters. The other option is just not to go on Facebook. I get that. But I'm weak. <laughs> uh, what's wrong with vegan? Because uh, meat tastes awesome. All right, we're not going to get into that. We'll, do the, we'll let the troll be the troll. <laughs> Uh, Lars, I was actually going to tag you earlier today. A friend of mine posted about a stopping a, a eating festival in China. Okay, yeah, I see. So that's the thing. I see uh, a lot of vegan stuff anyway. I follow a bunch of that stuff anyway. So like the Mercy for Animals and, and all that crap. I get all that stuff all the time. So Yeah, Justin, I saw that video. Good stuff, man. It looks real good. You're missing out. Well, no, because you post on Instagram, right? 
So that's the thing too. A lot of people they post on Instagram and it automatically posts to Facebook like me. So I don't even need to see it twice. I much rather have be following like fifteen hundred people on uh, Instagram because I get zero notifications. Well, that's not true. Sometimes there's those group chats that I absolutely hate. Um, but for the most part, it's like no notifications. I can scroll at my leisure. I can still, you know, see stuff. But I don't know. I know some people can get upset with this kind of talk. Like this is, you know, what the real truth is. And, and this is going to probably piss people off, and that's fine, because uh, it's true for me as well. And I, I heard Gary V say it. Uh, you guys know I talk about him all the freaking time. Uh, but I agree with what he was saying, right? It's like, just, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> you having a bad day today? Nobody cares. The only people that care maybe are like your immediate family, but when we start posting that stuff on social media and all that crap, nobody cares. You might pretend they care, but nobody cares. Like, you've got... This is the thing. You go on your on your phone or whatever on Facebook and you and you type in like, "Oh, today sucks." Who cares? Nobody cares. <laughs> people like uh, you know. Well, don't maybe there is like a group of closet people that like, you know, downer stuff, or just like mundane updates that really like Twitter updates that have no purpose. <laughs> And if you're one of those people, hey, you know, more power to you. I just, I had to cut all that out because it frustrates me personally. Because I'd rather fill my day with things that, you know, obviously I'm interested in, but like proactive stuff and, you know, things that, oh, cool, I can go check this thing out and, you know, learn something. You know, no offense, but dog pictures, cat pictures, all that stuff, like it just doesn't, to me, it's just like in the grand scheme of it, it just, I don't, it doesn't, don't matter. It's not, it's not that important. Now, like my brother, he just got, him and his family, they just got a new dog. And I love seeing those pictures because I, you know, it's different. <laughs> I think maybe that's it. Some people, they see a difference there and some people don't. And I'm not saying one's better than the other. I just know what, what I want or what I prefer. So just to keep everything sane, I suppose. Just filter it out. That's all. Um, I feel like the shadow doesn't make any sense. Let's look at it this way. So the light's coming here. All right. So this might actually... Let's actually put a lot more of this in shadow. Like, I would rather be... Just to <laughs> get back on that soapbox. I would rather be seeing people posting. Like, are you guys following any comic book stuff on Facebook? I'm following a lot. And I'm about to leave a whole bunch of it. Just because it's, so, it's too much. Like, I've done it too. I'm, I'm guilty of this. But I absolutely hate it. It's like, I'll see somebody posted an image in this place. And then you'll see that same notification in like five other art groups. And it's like, like now I don't even want to go see it. It's just... So and so updated a picture. It's like God, damn. like okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just. I think it's just becoming. At least for me, I, I'm I'm so on tilt. It's ridiculous. But <laughs> I think it's just that it's it's like email now. You know, like did you want to sub subscribe to this newsletter? Sure. But then I'm getting stuff where it's just like, it feels like ads now, and that's just you know, it's not. It's becoming a, a, an issue. So anyway, 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 anyway. anyway, anyway. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, my post to Facebook and Twitter. Justin does, yep. Uh, Nick, don't be so Canadian. We don't owe you anything. <laughs> my girlfriend and I were actually talking about that. She works at a call center, and uh, it's just for American... Well, I guess if you guys are most of you are American here. So it's like, uh, what is it? Is it AT and T or is it, it's one of your guys' things or whatever? But the call centers here in Canada, and they're not allowed to let the people know that you're from Canada because the Americans will assume that it's like Canadians stealing American jobs. But it's not. It's the company. They're just outsourcing because it's probably cheaper. So it's <laughs> we're not taking it. It's the company that's doing the problem. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and that's what we were just laughing at. It was like so many Americans. 
This isn't an attack. It's like I feel like your guys, the way you understand language, like how you under how you communicate properly, is sort of like uh, aggressive in a way to the point where it's like. You say your point, and then you tell me your point, and then you just go back and forth. It's not like there's a moment in there where you kind of empathize with what the person's saying and then reply that way. That's what, like, And I know not all Canadians are that way. Trust me, they're not. But I know that's the way I am, where it's like I'll hear something and I'll try to like, oh, okay, yeah, but you guys hear it all the time. I retract before I even talk just to like put it in context before I say it, you know? Where it's like <laughs> we're talking about some of the phone calls, so we just call, you know, like... You owe me X amount of money because you, you know, I was overcharged, this and that. Uh, and, you know, she would say, okay, I understand that. Just give me a second to pull it up. Just saying that puts some people on some serious fire, man. And they're like, what do you mean? What's taking you so long? Like, oh, relax. Relax. We're going to figure this out. Don't worry about it. Now you're just pissing me off. You know what I mean? <laughs> so good. Uh, infinite. Uh, some people want to feel like they're part of the lives of others despite how... Uh, you got an issue with RPG stuff? Don't like RPGs? Not a fan? Uh, Nabu, I watch like 80 people on Tabastic. That's good, man. A lot of good stuff there. Yeah, but see, that's a little bit different, right? Like, Tabastic, in this case, like, you're going there to read a comic. It's not like your feed fills up with uh, stuff. You know what I'm saying? No, no, don't worry about it, Lars. No, I, look, you brought it up, but it was a good thing to t kind of talk about it for those that are listening that... Maybe you go there and you're like, we were friends, now we're not friends, and somehow get, like, <laughs> hurt by that. I can always be reached. People can always, like, email me. I always reply to people. So it's not like, <laughs> I don't know. It almost, to me, some of that stuff reminds me of, like, teenage kids. Where it's like, oh, so-and-so unfriended me. We're not real friends. Not like, come on. Let's all be grown-ups. And pardon the, 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 the vulgar language here. Stop being pussies and just, you know, it is what it is. If you want to contact me in this case, like, by all means, I'm always there. Just there's no reason for me to see people's, like, graduation pictures and shit. Like, it just doesn't... <laughs> like, okay, cool. No, don't, don't get me wrong. Maybe it's just me being, like, <laughs> just all about myself or something. I don't mean it to sound that way, but... Like, it's great if you graduated, or you got a new pet, or uh, you just had a baby, or you just got a new job, or you got fired from your job. That sucks. Yeah, man. Like, I get all that stuff. Like, the life stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's almost like the news. You know how you guys watch the news, or maybe you guys don't, but you hear about the news, and it's like, over in, I don't know, pick a place that's not North America, and it's like, all these people are dying in war and stuff. Like, you can remove yourself to the point where it's like, you... Maybe, I don't want to say maybe you don't care, but you don't even think about it on the day-to-day. -day. Like, it just, it's not, it doesn't affect you. You don't let it affect you, right? It's the same friggin' thing I find on, like, a lot of, like, especially Facebook, especially that. Maybe, maybe it's just my time to leave it for a little while or just walk away altogether. Um, but it's, it's like that kind of thinking, you know, like, it's, I don't, since I don't know you, it's like there's, um, like personally, it's different when, like when you guys are in the stream and stuff, yeah, it's like an actual conversation of stuff that's happening. That's radically different than just the, the mundane, like check out my, you know, my, uh, <laughs> it's like going to somebody's house that you don't know or your girlfriend or boyfriend's house for the first time and their grandparents or their parents start showing you like, um, like a scrapbook of when they were younger, like, <laughs> You don't know them just yet, so it's kind of like, okay, you know, this is cool, but you're, you know, eh, okay, you know, like, how much more of this we got? It's different when you've been there for, like, years, and you're like, oh, that was, when okay, and then you start to understand it, you know? I don't know. I feel like I'm just all over the place. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Infinite loves it. Okay, cool. Awesome. I love, it. yeah, RPGs are the best, man. I just got notified, like, eight times. Over. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I find that happens literally with, like, the art stuff that I'm following. Um, There's, like, uh, artists looking for work. You know what it is? It's because this is the thing. I just realized. I'm an idiot. It's not that I'm... The groups that I'm following, that's not the problem. Because when somebody... When you get that, sometimes if you have it turned on, it'll be like, so, like, somebody posted in that group. And you're like, cool, if you want, you can check it out. What it is, is I'm following people that po post multiple things, and it notifies me that they posted in that place. 
So you're inclined to go check it out, right? But when that person, and I've done it too, posts in multiple places, you just see like five profile pictures in your notification. Like you go to your notification and I've, I've been there. I don't know if you guys have been there or not, but hear me out. I'll go there and it'll be like 30 notifications. And you're like, Jesus, okay. Let's just press that button and see what happens. And you look and like a good chunk of it's the same face or a couple of the same faces. You're like, oh my, like I don't even check it out. I just don't because I know it's most likely going to show up in my feed anyway. So it's like, God, like (laughs) I just have to like, I guess, you know how you can turn your notifications off on your phone and shit? It's, it's, it's that. I just have to purge it all, I guess. Hey, just burn it to the ground. <laughs> um, Dan is saying, I have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. I'm very, I'm a, I'm very introverted, so I can, I can't, oh man, come on, guys. Uh, so I can have more relationships with people via Facebook, but granted, it's not as deep as meaningful. As, yeah, that's, you're 100% right there, man. Lars, I did the same thing. I deleted a bunch of people that I don't care about. I know I can reach out to you anyway. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, And it's not... <laughs> that's what I was saying. Uh, people need to stop being pussies. I don't mean it to be offensive. I'm just saying it's it's that. If you needed to talk to somebody, they're, they're usually always there. You can always message anybody, right? It's just the... Again, the... the it's not, I get, yeah, it's the care stuff. Like, it's nice that good things happen to people, of course. But, like, your day-to-day, do you care? Do you really, like... Do you... <laughs> you get up hoping maybe you do maybe you do and if you do then great i don't like i don't get up and go like all right let's load up facebook grab a cup of coffee and scroll and just start liking everybody's successes today like i'm just i got shit i gotta do (laughs) you know so maybe that's where it's a little different anyway is the light source sh- uh, no the light source is still the light source is coming like uh so the print is like this okay so the light source is coming from the bottom so uh if you guys remember, well, I can't bring it up here, but th- that's where we're having it. It's going to be like, because he's right here is a building, right? Like a gargoyle thing. We're going to have like bricks and stuff over here. And he's got all the, um, you know, tentacles and stuff or his tentacles, a symbiote kind of connected here. So he's hanging upside down on this building. After this shoulder, I gotta do the cast shadow from the tongue. Uh, Nabu, does Facebook or any social media ideal, or any social, uh, sorry, media ideal for artwork? I usually just post mine on DeviantArt, ArtStation, DrawCrowd, MediaBank. Uh, so all those places you just posted or you just said, um, I think like that's where artists hang out, right? So that's the I think this is the difference um, or something to take in, into consideration. When you're posting on something that's primarily an art forum, in my opinion, it's like that's where artists go, right? So if you're trying to build like you're trying to get better and, and you know, maybe – I say meet friends, but try to get into like a little art click a little bit, then yeah, 100% post that stuff. But if you're trying to possibly get work or something, I think that's where you have to be on Facebook. Um, and you don't have to like update and stuff. I mean, or I mean, converse with people necessarily, but definitely be around. Uh, so Facebook, Twitter, especially Instagram, in my opinion, uh, Tumblr, Snapchat, you know, there's, there's things like that where it, it, it can benefit you to be in there because that's where there's going to be more people in those places than on DeviantArt. Like DeviantArt's loaded, but it's all artists, right? And every now and then you might get somebody in there that's looking to hire an artist because that's where artists hang out. Um, but on, on, the, on the other like I guess, like I've never, like let's put it this way, I've never done anything on Twitter or Facebook and got work from just a like a, a, a writer, we'll say, personally. It's usually like, somebody that's either following me or that knows me and they're like, oh, hey, can I get a commission because they see me posting artwork. Um, all the art gigs that I've gotten, like freelance stuff, meaning, you know, like an indie comic project, that's all been on like DeviantArt and art sites that way. So you can get work 100% on those places. I guess it's just the style of work, at least for me, uh, the, way, the way that's been. That's just been my experience. Uh, 
uh, Keeman, you putting in the shadows with uh, non-photo blue pencil. So yeah, just to go over this, I'm basically swiping <laughs> uh, Rob from Sketchcraft. A little process. He we were talking about it actually, like off of a, one of our you know shows that we did for him or on on uh, the Sketch uh, Sketchcraft channel. And we were talking about prints and stuff, and I was just asking him about like why he does this sort of thing, and it, and it made sense. I just haven't had a chance to try it, so that's what this is. Basically, I'm going to do like a limited print run of prints. So I'm um, I'm going to I'm going to do that. Plus, uh, there'll be an offer to buy just this as well, or this with a print. So uh, the idea there is, let's say I only do 20 prints. So I'm going to scan this in, and the reason we're using non-photo blue is because when I scan it in in Photoshop, I don't know if we can do it in Clip Studio, but we'll see. You can remove all the blue. Okay, so all the shadow's gone, so that I can color it properly. Um, and then when I go in to do the print, you know, the light line work's already done and stuff. I might, I'm most likely going to have to touch up some inking and all that, but it shouldn't be too brutal. Uh, and then I can make, let's say I only do 20 prints. So when I post online, I can go, hey guys, here's a new Venom print, uh, you know, limited sale or limited quantity. There's only 20 available. Once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, and I also have this version, which is you can buy this with a print uh, for a little bit more money. Now, the reason why is it could... And it's it's pretty much just testing your audience, the people that watch your stuff, that buy your stuff. Not not like you guys necessarily. I know some of you have bought my stuff, which is you know awesome. But it's the people that aren't artists that just like the like my art that are following me. It's those people to see if any of them are interested and see if something like this moves. Because if it does, then just selling this alone is worth the entire process, for the most part. You know what I'm saying? You you know what I'm you know what I'm saying? Reddit is awesome as well. Yeah, man. Sure is. <sighs> la, la, la. Okay, so the tongue. So his tongue is actually going to cover up quite a bit of this stuff. All right, Lars. Yeah, man. Enjoy your weekend. Take care, bud. Oh, is that right? <laughs> well, we can all draw Venom. Let's draw Venom together. Uh, infinite um i need a hand with something what do you think is a good font size for a comic i'm working on three and one of them is very text heavy at the moment okay um are you 
Okay, I'll answer that. It's actually a really simple answer or solution, as long as I know this one thing. Uh, what kind of comic are you making? Are you making like a traditional eleven, like a traditional comic book, eleven by seventeen, uh, and then done for print? Or is it some other like like a weird like a, a much different size? webcomic but I wanted to keep the option for print available okay so that doesn't that doesn't let well I, I guess that, hmm. so let's say webcomic yes so is it still like 11 by 17 size you're just shrinking it down or are you is it like a different size tell me this in uh, manga studio or whatever program you're using what size is your document in inches not pixels tell me that and I'll, I'll give you your uh, try to if it was going to be printed would it be like a regular comic book or is it smaller Okay, so if it's going to be a regular comic, that's 11 by 17 inches, okay? So the, what I would do um, is just Google search, like, Marvel comic, I don't know, pick a character. Like, let's say Captain America, okay? So Google, like, a comic, or sorry, um, Captain America comic, grab one that clearly looks like Marvel did it, right? And that has speech balloons. You copy that image, paste it into your document, or your page size, and you probably have to transform it to, like, make it bigger. So make it bigger, uh, and then just grab your text tool and copy that size. That way, the reason I say that um, is because Marvel or whoever you're going to do this from, maybe it's DC, they've already taken the work to figure out what's an appropriate size for print, uh, and you should be good. The only part where it might get a little weird is since you're going for web, you might have to be shrinking those pages down so the font might get smaller. Uh, and if that's the case, then you're kind of stuck no matter what. So when you print, the font might be a little big, but if your focus is on web, I find if I find anything that's on web, the bigger the font, the better, because most people are reading, no matter what kind of web comic you do, they're reading it on like some sort of mobile device. Some people are reading it on tablets and stuff, uh, but most people are reading from their phones. So the smaller your text goes there, especially if it's a lot of text, it can just look like a mess and it's just too busy for people to check out. <clears throat> <What's>, <laughs> no, I'm a copy artist, right? That's all I do. I just <laughs> I just copy other people. All right, we got a pen. 
pencil sharpener. I do, oh my god. I don't even know if I still had a pencil sharpener. It's a Ninja Turtle one too. Alright, let's see how this goes. Oh, it sounds like it's just chewing this up. God damn it. Oh, it just broke. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, God. Um, where are we going here? Light source. No, that's what, that's like, uh, what I did with Jessup King. I was looking around at other web comics that mine was similar to in size so like uh i looked at a few comics that were on instagram not so much webtoons because they do it a little different but primarily web uh, instagram and i copied them pasted them into like a 600 dpi file that i draw at grab my text and i was like all right because most people you you assume <laughs> Oh, well, I guess that depends too. You got to look at who you're copying from, right? I would copy from somebody that's kind of look seems established or has been doing it for a while, or they've been in this case making comics for a while, because you know those people they're not just going to do something and just put it out there without testing something first. Uh, so when I saw there a couple people doing their web comic, I could just kind of compared my text size to theirs, made the adjustment. The other thing I did is uh, like on Instagram, I just made a quick post as like a test to see how it came across on devices and then like what you can do is after a couple of days you can just delete it so it doesn't show up in your feed anymore um, but that's, a, that's a quick test you can do oh no don't worry about it man whatever it's Saturday uh, hey Tim how's it going man what do you think comics will be like in 50 years oh Jesus I have no idea I know I'm not an innovator in this genre, so I just stopped thinking about it. What I think I'm good at is taking what's kind of already there and just putting, uh, like, I guess my style or or spin on it. And it's not like a, 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 um, a, a big spin. Uh, it's just changing it a bit to fit everything else that I do. Um, so that means whatever comics is going to be, as long as I still enjoy it, then I'll just adjust what I do to f still fit that. But I'm not, like I say, I'm not an innovator, so I'm not going out trying to figure out uh, what it's going to look like. I'll just try to work within it, if that makes sense. What do you guys think it'll look like? Do you guys have any opinions on it? Is it virtual reality stuff? Is it those 360 panels, degree panels? Are you in the book? You know, because like, I, I will say, the thing that I do like about comics that you don't really get anywhere else is sort of being in charge of the tempo. You know, like everything else, it's kind of told to you or presented to you. Uh, if it's music, you're listening to the beat, and when it gets faster, it gets faster. You don't get a choice, really. But with comics, it can guide you along. Like, it can feel like, okay, this is, there's a fight scene, and all these panels, there's no words, it's just quick panels, quick panels, quick panels, uh, but you could still stop at any point and look at that, look at the panels in detail and stuff and not move with the tempo, which is great. You can, as a reader, you kind of like, you choose how the, the comic itself is going to be kind of presented to you. We're getting there. We're almost done this.
think once we're done, we're done with this, uh, I'm going to save the inking for probably tomorrow. We should probably start doing some Jessup King after this. So what I'll do is I'll stop this, the recording of the stream. The stream will still be going on, uh, but I'll stop it for the video to be uploaded to YouTube so that this isn't part of that video. That way it's not like a, you know, <laughs> X amount of hour long thing for people that aren't interested in the Jessup stuff or whatever. I feel like I still want to put the <laughs> contour line on here though. And then if I put the contour line on here, I'm probably going to just want to ink the whole damn thing. You know, no, I'm going to, we're going to do this right. We're going to do this workflow right. I'm going to put the contour line on here and then walk away. Because the contour line is supposed to get us ready for inks. You know, I can go in there, I can just worry about pushing and pulling lines and all that stuff. But the contour line is important. So we'll just, we'll, we'll just do that and then we'll walk away. Okay, so that's that. Flip it around. And let's finish this stuff. Uh, so like I say, I, I know in this version here, because I'm not trying to make this perfect. This is just supposed to be really like, uh, like a fun drawing to look at once it's done inking. When we color this though, I'm going to, you see where all the shading is? Because I'm going to have to reshade it and stuff like that. And you guys will see, and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of keep track of how long it's taken to see if this is worth it. But, like, here's an example. You see how all of his up in here would be shadow? So when we scan this in and we start coloring it there, let's assume, I think I got, like, a green light source at the bottom. Um, let's say, like, green light coming up. So all, like, around here will kind of be highlighted green, but in the shadows where you can have, like, the moonlight, right? So it's, like, a, almost like a whitish gray or a whitish blue. You can start to cut back into the shadows, and it's it's building up stuff like that that really makes it feel like that shiny material that I think Venom needs. You know, like, where it's almost like he's always wet kind of thing. Yeah, I know that, Dave. <laughs> Those days feel like they're long gone, don't they? Where everybody it feels like everybody gets offended by stuff. It's so annoying. Like I mean, it's different when you're attacking somebody, calling them like names, right? We're not talking about bullying. We're just talking about like language, like you know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe what is that like? Is it just? We're taking people's feelings into account too much. Like when you tell people like, you know, suck it up. <laughs> That's like a bad thing to say now or something. I don't get it. It's a little odd. Yeah, well, yeah, well I like I get empathy. That's one of the things that makes us awesome is the ability to have empathy for other people, right? But maybe that's just what it is. It's like, it's the bullying when you're calling people, you're making, I don't know, maybe it's just, it's just bullying, bullying in general. <laughs> I can't get behind that. So I could feel for other people that are being bullied and want to like stop that. But I guess that's where this whole thing goes. It's like, how far do you take that? Cause like, what's, how far do you go with bullying? Like what is considered bullying? I don't know. Everybody's sensitive. It is annoying, I'll, I'll be straight up and honest. Because I feel like there's a whole bunch of language. And I'm not talking about like bad words to call people. I'm just saying there's like language that... If you guys have ever read 1984, 
I highly recommend reading it. They start to talk about stuff that's similar to this, where it's like the dictionary, like every year they cut words out of the dictionary. Uh, that way it's to lower vocabulary. And what that ends up doing is basically they're saying like there's different ways to say happy, let's say, right? Like joy, happy, um, exhilarated, um, blissful, euphoric, stuff like this, right? That it, it, it describes happiness, but in different ways. So and the idea in that book is, and I, and I dig it, is by getting rid of those words, so now it's just happy. You don't have the word like you don't have the word like joy. What you're doing is you're kind of like cutting back on expression and language that means different things, and they express different things. But if you don't have a word to describe that that feeling or that expression, then you 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 can't really have that feeling. If that makes sense. And I feel like in a lot of ways that's kind of like the shit that's happening now. Where it's you kind of it's not even that you can't use words necessarily it's just like you can't talk about certain things because people get offended and it's like but then you're just missing out on this whole like hi Zelda how are you you're just missing out on like explaining a feeling you have that's why I'm saying like bullying 100% everybody's gonna get behind that no bullying right but like telling somebody to I don't know maybe I'm getting all over the place here <laughs> good old thought crimes yeah Exactly. Uh, Infinite saying, bullying sucks, but we need it. It helps us grow strong, but communication, empathy, and comfort for those you love must follow the bullying. Hmm. Because I get, I get the, the, the side of that too, right? Because, you know, without the bullying, you wouldn't be explaining to people, I suppose, like why bullying is wrong. It's like that whole side's kind of just like nobody's allowed to do it, so nobody does it. And on the same side, if you allow bullying, it's like, I don't know. It's weird. It's, 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 a, it's a good discussion to have. It's almost like if you allow bullying, I'm not defending this at all. I'm just saying if you allow bullying, it's kind of like you can't have good without evil, right? So you need bullying in order to describe the bad. Is that is that a thing? I don't, know if that, I don't necessarily know if that's true. I, I find that's like a lot with like religion. Right, where people are like, well, if you didn't, if you didn't believe in God and religion, you'd be a bad person. <laughs> you just, you know, like you don't find like certain things weird. Like without religion, you know, you wouldn't have certain things like thou shalt, like the, like the extreme shit, like thou shalt not kill. So if I don't believe in God, I'm just going around like holding back this thing that just wants me to kill people because I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like it's the same kind of excuse there that I don't agree with. It's, just, it's stupid. Okay, see you later, Keeman. Thanks for popping in, my man. So, Infinite saying, bullying shouldn't be condoned, but not attacked in the way it is now. So, can you explain a little bit on that? I know you're, you're just on a keyboard, so it's... You know, it's not really like you're talking your point, but. So how is bullying attacked? I grew up in a time of a lot of violence and pain and nothing but stronger for it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that. I know. I think I know. I understand what you're saying, but I don't necessarily know if it's a it, you're better off because of that. I do think, yeah, for sure, people grow when they're through some trauma and shit, or you know, life was hard and you become hardened for it. Um, but I don't necessarily know if that's better. Well, it's like bones. A broken bone never heals right, but a bone that slightly damages microfractures heals stronger than it ever was. Yeah, but okay, like even I know, I know the metaphor you're using there, but even in that argument, it doesn't hold up, right? Because it's like, well, you're talking about broken bones. 
right? So the bones hold together stronger from damage. So next time you get hit, your bone doesn't break as much. I get that, right? But when you start talking about complex things like body issues and shit, let's say, and people are always making fun of your fatness. Now, yeah, you could be a Susie and it's like, okay, well, you know, we'll use that language again, right? Like, don't be a pussy and go to the gym and work out. That's great, but there's usually underlining things that go in there, right? Like, what if we go, well, I don't want to go too extreme with this stuff, but you know what I'm saying? I, I just I just don't agree myself that it's like a blanket thing that if people were just harder or something, that everything would be better. I don't think that's true, but at the same time, I do think there's like this, there is like a little bit of like a gag order kind of thing on you can't use certain language, I suppose. I don't know. You can go through nurture or through pain. That I agree with. That I agree with. I actually, I, you know what? Thank you, Dan. I, I, that's exactly what I, I, I agree with. One hundred percent. You can grow through who brings you up and what's around you, as well as pain for sure. Because right, like some people, they get their family and their family's great, and they teach them like legit shit, and they become a good human being. Some people, their family dies, and because of that, they become a good human being. And there's the other side of it. Those exact same things create bad stuff too, right? Uh, Nick, I think some conflict is important to learn how to resolve conflict, but I think, oh, yeah, okay, here we go, but I think bullying is something more, it's a pattern of, yeah, 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 I think people can grow through bullying, but I think it's better not to have it, I agree, I agree with that too, I mean, yeah, bullying needs, uh, there's a problem with somebody bullying, you know what it is, it's weird, it's like, I, I don't think it'll ever, I don't think it'll ever go away, just because of the way the world works, it's not, the world's not fair, so because of that, it's a, I think a lot of it becomes like a learned condition from parenting, right? Nobody knows what bullying, or like parents that know their kids bully, what they go through, right? Like those parents could say like people with money are just like pieces of shit and stuff like that. It, and it, it's not totally true at all, but the bullying, the bully, you know, that's what they hear and that's what they know. Bullying people who don't deserve it isn't right. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, let me throw that back one at you too. So, who who deserves bullying then? Like another bully? played very Canadian of you <laughs> we're almost done you guys I'm just doing the bricks up here and then contour line and walk away been doing this for three hours damn okay and it won't sell what <laughs> nah, it's okay uh, I think what we'll do is we're gonna use these to do the contour for you Well, 
what is bullying? Uh, that's another question. There are things nowadays that I feel are, are being so finitely quantified while others are painted in such broad strokes. Yeah, like, let's be honest. It's, I think we all agree on certain things that, you know, are pretty fucked up. But it's like the little stuff where some people might be too sensitive to things. But just saying that alone is pretty, uh, it's pretty broad as well. So it's, it's hard to just kind of, I don't know. Whatever. <clears throat> You're an 80s baby from Queens? <laughs> I'm an 80s baby too, not from Queens. <laughs> but again, I think what you're talking about there might be your nurture or your, uh, yeah. You know, like what you were brought up around. You had to be maybe a little harder than where some people grow up. But we're kind of getting into a whole bunch of different shit here, so I'm kind of just done talking a little bit. All right, so what we're doing here is the contour line, which is the outlining line. <laughs> uh, and well, I'm not inking. This is just to get us started. So uh, if you're not used to this workflow, what it is is since I'm just outlining, when we ink that's when we start worrying about the line weight so we can pull into and pull away from this contour line this is just to get us started that's all it is that way I can come back to this with fresh eyes because I'm not intending to finish this whole thing today I got other shit I gotta do like a comic book that'd be good I'm kind of happy with this so far, you know, I feel, this feels pretty cool. Came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. It'll be interesting once we scan this in and I remove the blue to see what it looks like. I'm hoping it turns out. If not, we'll figure out some ways to do whatever. Worst case scenario, if I don't, if I'm not able to make a print out of this and it's just... Here's some original art, you know, like that's fine too. If I can't sell that, I mean, like, who cares? It's a little bit of time here to, you know, experiment with some stuff. So there's really no loss to the whole thing. That's a good feeling. And I'll take a picture, or whatever, obviously, and I'll, I'll post it online so you guys can see it. Uh, I might. Next time we do the inking. I'll save the scanning and stuff for you guys as well so you can see it um, because it's you know the, the beginning of this process I showed you how I got it to here right but scanning it back in and bringing it you know back into Photoshop or whatever you're gonna do and you don't have an 11 by 17 uh, printer or scanner I should say you might get some value out of seeing or how I do it or how most of us probably do it Without leaving cliffhangers, you kind of have to scan this stuff three times. It's uh, the top. You scan here, scan here, scan here, uh, and hope that it kind of lines up. So it, usually it never lines up perfectly, so you kind of have to go back in there and uh, <laughs> adjust stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. I don't think I'm going to ink these, like the tendrils coming off of them. I'll leave that for now. Because I don't know if I'm going to leave them the same thickness or we're just going to go a little bit lighter with them. What is that? How am I buying it like that with the thing? Okay, so just so you know, <laughs> I appreciate that thing. But uh, th this, 
What's that? Uh, one thing you might want to consider in the future is living room ability for your... Yeah, I don't care about living room. You know what? Like, uh, This is actually a fun thing. You guys let me know. What do you guys like in your living room? You know what I like in my living room? I don't like paintings and mountains. I want like concept art and you know superhero shit all over my wall. I want my own covers and stuff. Uh, art that I make covering my walls. I don't care about like... When my girlfriend moves in, we bought a George Costanza and a Kramer painting. You guys know the ones where George is like on the bed? And the Kramer painting, that's going to be in our living room. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm definitely hitting something. I'm, I'm not trying to, like, you know. I, I know what you're saying, Nick. I, I do appreciate that. I'm just not interested in that kind of thing. Thank you, Bo. Batenberg. You're new, I believe, eh? So feel free to hit, the, just hit, you know, con consider hitting that like button. Hit the follow. Come say hi. There's an art table ready for you. Nice little Cintiq setup. We just got the French press. Still warm. There's cups available. Join in. Nabu, I won't mind buying it like that without ink. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, so the inking, like I say, I'm all this blue for for the original here. I'm not coloring this black. Don't worry about that. This is going to be. Uh, it's all like thin line weight to thick line weights. That's it. I'm not. There we go. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Appreciate it, sir. Yeah, so don't worry about it. If you guys are interested in this, I'm not... It, it's very similar to how we do Jessup King. N my days of going in there and b heavy black shading everything, those are gonzo. I don't... That's not my... Sh and that's not my jam anymore. I, this is where I've always wanted to get to, but I've wanted to always understand shadow. The difference here... And this is actually something that's going to be interesting. Let's say I get a gig at Marvel or DC, okay? What I'm interested in trying to figure out is like, okay, so... When I do my line art, I like the way the shadows are like this. So it's almost like I have to let the colorist do the shadowing for me, uh, as opposed to like what I'm used to. So we'll, you know, I'm talking about things that might not ever happen, right? So we'll see how all that goes. But I'd much rather be doing this. If you guys have followed my channel and my art for any period of time, like the heavy rendering stuff, it's fun, super fun. But it's just I like this. This is kind of like this style of art. So it got me like turned on, and excited to draw even when I was younger and stuff, there's something, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to blow smoke up my ass, but this is just, it reminds me of, I've told you guys about like Capcom art, even if you guys don't see it, it's sort of like the energy I felt growing up, this kind of stuff, and why I'm grateful for doing like Jessup and my own thing now is because it gives me the excuse to build on this style more. And then if I'm fortunate enough, it can replace all my old stuff that people recognize me from or recognize me for doing, you know, uh, and they don't even like that's the old me kind of thing. You know, they can look at this and go, if somebody wanted a commission or, or a cover or I don't know, maybe a comic gig. Like I told you guys, as I finished Jessup King pages, like the inks, I send them off to like some editors and stuff. Uh, just to let them know what I'm doing and you never know what's going on. Right. And that's why I wanted to another reason I suppose uh, to sort of draw this way as opposed to what I guess I, I would always have considered my portfolio style which is very akin to you know what, what you'd see everywhere else not to say that this is so unique that you've never seen this before I'm just saying you guys I hope you know what I'm talking about right we all as like artists you know what you want to draw you know what you wish you could draw then there might be a side of you like I wish I had the balls to draw like Jack Kirby <laughs> you know what I mean I wish I had the balls to just I don't want to say feel like who gives a shit and just draw but like uh, I don't know about you guys let's say you're looking at Marvel DC and you see how they draw and you're like I know if I want to draw Spider-Man I have to kind of maybe go in a certain style I'm just I don't want to, I don't want to do that I want to just keep harnessing this and, 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 and drawing all that shadows and the rendering and stuff has helped me out tremendously for sure because you know like all this stuff has helped like this shadows hopefully I don't know you guys can't really see it necessarily right now but once the, the line art and stuff gets in there uh, like it, it, it's it's huge you know like it's it's almost it's basically night and day and it just helps bring this all together for me anyway and again that's why I'm saying I know some of you guys don't see what I see and that, that's that's cool too uh, Bo, uh, so are you using Copic markers on this? No, um, so what I'll be doing with this, you know, here, let me see if I can show you guys some examples, because I feel like this, maybe I'm not communicating this well enough. Um, I suppose we could just go to Jessup King stuff, right? Let's check out some inks. Uh... 
what's the page this one just went live this one oh we'll do this one okay just give me a second here and i'll show you so this is just going to get scanned in to photoshop i'm removing the blue and then i'm going to be reshading it and coloring it again to make prints like uh to sell 11 by 17 prints that'll go to the copy store to sell right so we still got to color this in photoshop and all that this right here is literally it we're doing here and then we're doing the thin to thick lines which i'm going to show you in a second right now this is what you call a contour line it's the the line that's outside of stuff the next stage after this is la line weights which is which is really cool about this uh, contour line is because like I can pull in a thick line, a thin line from here, and it the, the contour line just starts it. The the line art or the line weight, sorry, oh, fucking so many words. The line weights pull it together. So the idea is I offer when I sell the prints that there is an original. If anybody wants it, you get the original plus a print. That that's all. Um. So let's. Uh, oops. Shit. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, let me switch it over here, just so you can kind of see where I'm, I'm thinking of putting the inks here, okay? So, uh, stream. There you go. So, you see how Jessup's colored, or kind of inked up? These are the line weights I'm talking about, okay? Like, you see how it goes thin to thick? Like, check this out. When I, oh my gosh, when I turn off the inks, just so you can see, this is what we're doing right now, okay? Just imagine, like, all this blue that I have isn't there. This is what we did today. What I'm doing now is this thick line. Uh, tomorrow, what I'll be doing is that, this, doing this to it. Maybe not as extreme, but pretty, pretty close to this, and that's it. Okay. I hope that makes sense anyway. Hey, Pilad, a uh, little shriveled, little to the left. How about you? see that let me move it up here same i like it uh so how do you scan to get this uh well that's gonna be the interesting part <laughs> so in photoshop what you can do that's why they call this non-photo blue uh, i believe they called it that back in the day because when you scanned or not scanned it photocopied it the blue wouldn't show up so you could kind of do all your rough line art and stuff that way uh but in photoshop i don't know about clip studio i imagine you can i just haven't farted around with it I'll probably try it once we scan this in and stuff tomorrow, uh, but with that, in Photoshop anyway, you, there's like a thing you can go up there and you can remove color. Uh, and sometimes it's not perfect. Sometimes, you know, like, it'll still think the blue is part of the line art, so your line quality can kind of go to shit a little bit, uh, but we're going to see how bad it gets. I, I, it's usually pretty fine. getting these in here and then we're going to wrap this up here.
Oh, I'm not I'm not doing any of that today, but but I could help you out. Uh, what we're gonna be doing? Just <coughs> uh, the stream's gonna keep going. I'm just gonna take maybe like a ten minute break after I'm done this here. It's almost done. Uh, I'll post this online so you guys can see it. Like I'll just take a picture of it. Um, then when we come back, we're gonna be in Clip Studio Paint uh, working on Jessup King comic pages. Uh, so I could help you maybe with a little bit with the layer stuff there if, if you need to, but removing blue and stuff, I'm not I'm not doing any of that today. That's for tomorrow. Cool. So there we go. Let's see if we can zoom out. Uh, is it zoomed out all the way? There it is. Okay. Well. Cool. So this is like I said, how I imagine the print to go. <laughs> but if people were to put it on their walls or whatever, I'm I'm sure they could just go like this. You know, and it's still whatever, but yeah, came up pretty good. Um, I'm pretty pumped about it. He's got the size that I want. Uh, there's, I was, I was a little bit afraid that there's not enough dynamic action kind of going on there. It's just him kind of standing straight, you know. So I'm, I'm hoping the hands kind of bring that out there. And that's why I started adding like the symbiote stuff kind of coming out just to give it a little bit more action, and then like the spider webbing kind of stuff down here, which uh, will need a little bit of work. But yeah, I'll take a picture of this. Uh, I'm just gonna, you know put be right back here on the screen uh but for everybody that's watching the youtube video thanks so much i appreciate it and um you guys stay tuned the next video coming up for the venom here will be the inks scanning it into photoshop uh and then i'm not sure if we're gonna do the shading tomorrow as well or if that's like throughout the week next week but we'll see uh, i'd like to get this done soon but i don't want to rush it and put any kind of thing on there uh jessup king takes priority so if i can sneak in an hour or two or in this case freaking three hours <laughs> uh we can kind of move it along and stuff so anyway thanks so much keep reading comics keep making comics and i'll talk to you soon Bye bye